after playing this song many times, I began to uh, fall apart because of just the Lord revealing his goodness. I can't say I've never prayed like this, but maybe on a rare occasion. But all of a sudden, and just began to cry out and say, Lord, kiss us with the kisses of your mouth and awaken love. That you would set our hearts ablaze. That as you look upon us as an assembly, that we would love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That, Lord, we can testify everyone, without exception, everyone, that our heart would have failed if we didn't believe that we would see your goodness in the land of the living. And even as Pastor Teresa spoke out and Sister Ellen and then Nicholas, I really believe the Lord is saying, your worship has ascended as a sweet Savior, Savior unto me. And the best is yet to come. Because even when you don't understand, you do understand that it's in your choosing, by virtue of choosing me, that I will be faithful, that I will be the one who fulfills the promises that I've made to you because I'm not a man that I should lie. Awaken us, Lord. Awaken the love and the passion. We've shared so many times, come back to your first love because it's all about you, Lord. But I couldn't help last night just to think, you know what, Lord? Being a man, there's some disconnect. The ladies the women of this church, all women, fully understand, Lord, awaken your betrothed with the kisses of your mouth. Amen. Let a fire begin once again in my soul. But I can tell you this, last night, because God is spirit, there is no gender per se. It's like, Jim, I think you get it. And I'm looking at your faces this morning, and you know what? I think you get it. Mm -hmm. But I bless you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Moses said, Lord, show us your glory. Show me your glory, excuse me. And he said, okay, I'll tuck you into this place, and I'll allow my goodness to parade past you. And there's a revelation there. And I really believe this morning, the goodness of God. I said I heard the sound of rain coming upon pastor's life. I believe it's raining now. Amen. It's raining. It's raining. Mm -hmm. And let's not dare any one of us to go and run. That wasn't some kind of funny thing and try and find an umbrella. Let's get soaked right. in the presence Amen. of the Lord. Amen. 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 So the oneness of what God's doing is, is amazing. So let me move now. We started talking about not understanding and what I came to share on understanding. Uh, but suffice it to say this, I have stood here before and said, because, because we're in the year 5784, that we're in a year of the open door or God opening doors, amen? It's not that it has to be qualified, but I knew that the Lord had touched me again to say, I want you to come to me because I want to uphold this thing about understanding. I said, all right, Lord, you know, uh, I don't understand. I know that sounds silly. So he took me to this verse. It's in 1 Chronicles 12, 32. 
And this is in the amplified version. And the Vizikar, men who have understanding, understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. 200 chiefs and all their kinsmen were under their command. And this is what I said to the Lord. I said, Lord, I am totally persuaded that you want to liken not just a few to be as the sons of Issachar, but every believer. Amen. Because we need to know what time is it in the spirit, Lord? Not only what time is it in the spirit, what time is it in the natural? And what we ought to do, whether it's pertaining to the things of the spirit, or pertaining to the things of the natural. And I understood in this moment, and I had to confess to the Lord, Lord, I don't want to understand any longer just by virtue of hindsight. Have you ever been there? Okay. Oh, it's all said and done now. The, the situation, the circumstance, whatever it might be, has pretty much played out. And all of a sudden, you and I have understanding. Oh, I understand why God said, told me not to do that. I understand why God told me to do that. I understand that God now, after it's all said, that he was positioning me for what my future, for myself, my family, the calling, the destiny of this church, and anything else. Oh, I can see that real clear now, Lord. I can see it. I wasn't complaining to the Lord, but I was saying, how much more? How much more would you give us understanding? Understanding that comes from above. We're not talking, because when we move and live and have our being and we try and act it out, opposed from walking it out with the Lord, we usually wind up in trouble on the short end of the stick. Are you there? Yes. Amen. No, I'm very serious. But how much more the Lord gives us understanding from the get-go, every step. We saw the song, he says, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the mountain, Lord. I wasn't too happy about it, but you were with me every step of the way, Lord. I understood that. And so when this was happening, I was saying, Lord, please open our understanding. Let it, let it be, Lord, that we can actually come to a place where, because we have your understanding, we can not only be more effective, we can also, in every given way, begin to live out the abundant life that Christ died for us. Yes. And it's not just about having abundant life. It's about making a difference in the earth. Not just making a difference, but being the difference in the earth. Amen. That the hidden treasure that he has put in these earthen vessels is now open and revealed because we are open and revealed. Is this making some sense to you? I said, Lord, I'm not complaining. But I understand now there's something that you have to show me so that your word will become flesh in me. I want it to become incarnate. I don't want it to be, oh, that was a good word, or that was a nice word, or that was a rainbow word. I want it to become flesh in me even as your word became flesh in the person of Christ, your son. Amen. Because when it becomes flesh in you and I, it becomes life-giving. You're not just telling somebody what you think you know or you understood. You're giving them the understanding, the revelation of where true understanding comes from and who is that understanding and who brings it forth and gives it in abundance. Are you with me? So far. Yes. I said, all right, Lord, we've, we've had some dialogue here. Would you please talk to me some more about this understanding? In Proverbs, the second chapter, verses 1 through 4, listen to what it says. Father, in Jesus' name. This morning you were raining down, raining down, raining down. May your presence thicken, Lord. May our hearts be so soft and tender 
because of the outpouring of your goodness. We give you thanks, Lord, even now, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beth, you have Proverbs 2, 1 through 4. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures. I said, all right, Lord, there's a lot in these verses. Obviously, it's beckoning you and I. It's admonishing us to pray for understanding, to seek the words, to seek understanding, to incline our ear to the command of the word of the Lord. But I have to be honest. I really did. It's like, Lord, what would happen, what would need to happen in my sisters and brothers and myself for me to really not strive or try and manufacture and say prayers to me because this is what we're supposed to do. Lord, give me understanding. Lord, give me understanding. Lord, give me understanding. Which is truly needful. But I don't want to manufacture something. And I believe you don't want to manufacture. You know what? I'm going to take it a step further. That we would not strive to do it. Because there's something in these verses that's being revealed to us. And that's really what I want. If you take anything away from here this morning, Father, in Jesus' name, that we would lay hold of this and have a firm grip on it. It's this. He said, it's as silver. It's as silver. It's as silver. That jumped out at me. I'll tell you why. Because silver in the word speaks of redemption. He's saying when you have understanding, when you live and move and have your being in the understanding that I provide from on high, because my ways are not yours and my thoughts are not your own, there is redemptive, hear me now, there's redemptive power in the understanding of the Lord. It's not just having understanding. It's living, moving, having our being in such a way that the understanding that comes from on high will produce redemption. You're looking at me. Listen. Noah understood that he needed to build an ark before the flood. He had understanding. David knew before the battle with Goliath, he said, hey, I can't wear your armor. I haven't tested it. I'm from another generation. This is not how I do my warfare. Come on. Uh, before the battle, before the battle, understanding, understanding. Another person rises up and you know what? From understanding from on high, the question comes, who do you say that I am? You. You, you, who do you say that I am? I say you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. You didn't get that understanding from any earthly means. You got it from my Father. What's been revealed to you is from heaven. It's all in your understanding. And you know what? I'm going to build my church on that understanding. You're going to live and move. And you're going to be a little rock, even now, in the midst of your brethren, that I can build on. Because you have an understanding that goes beyond human logic and rationale and whatever the theory or the stink is that comes from the earth. You're living above it. That's right. You have understanding. You have understanding. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. He's saying to you and I, I want to give you understanding before you go to the battle. You want to take this big guy out? You need to have understanding. Right. You need to know who you are how you do your warfare, and it's not based on what somebody else does, it's based on what I give you as understanding to meet the challenge. No, no, don't build a boat in your backyard. What are you talking about? What in the world do we need this big hunk to jump for? Because it's gonna provide salvation for not only me, but for my entire family. In Jesus' name. Yeah, you're, you're thinking about this now, right? Yeah. yeah. Sister Fran building a boat in her backyard. <laughs> and she ain't gonna be shy about, you don't get on this boat? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> all right, you think I'm crazy. That's all right. It's all right. 
I'd rather you think that. Ah. Father, please, let us understand. Literally, because you refuse to write on tablets of stone, but on hearts of flesh you will write. Woo! Right on our hearts of flesh that the understanding of God has redemptive power. I can't believe we sang that song this morning. I told you we don't talk. That's that's the goodness of God. That's right. Dempsey's responsible for these things. <laughs> when I don't understand. But do you understand that that's a paradox? It's an oxymoron. I don't understand, but I choose you because I understand, even though I don't understand, that I need to choose you. Now, that don't make good sense, right? I told you. You don't believe me. All right, Chihuahua. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 3, 13 to 14. Father, encourage us as your people. I'm walking, Lord, and I hear the sound of breaking under my feet. I'm walking, Lord, and you know what you're saying to me? Exactly what you're saying to every one of us, Lord, not just to me. What you said to Joshua, every place you put the sole of your foot. Every place you put the sole of your foot. The kingdom of God will go with you. I've already given it to you. Just a matter of you getting there and putting your feet on it. Amen. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. Check this out. For her, for her proceeds, her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. Amen. Wow. He said that beyond anything that you could imagine of the worth of the value of silver and gold, that him giving understanding is so far beyond that. It's so much greater than that, if you will. And that's why he's saying to search for her. Who? Understanding. Look for her. Dig for her like she's hidden treasure. Dig for her. I don't know why I keep coming back to it. Beth, would you be kind enough to go to Ephesians 1? We don't have too much further to go. Verses 17 and 18. I want to tell you with all the sincerity inside of me. It's very apparent to Susan and I how much you guys really and truly love us as you along the way have prayed, interceded, and blessed us in so many ways. What does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with everything. It's opened my understanding how needful we are of each other as the body of Christ. And the redemptive power of this, listen to me, the redemptive power of this, maybe you didn't know, but when you were talking to me or to Susan, that your words brought heavenly understanding, that brought redemptive power. Are you hearing me? That's why I'm tired of hearing the body being bad. We need each other. And there is great wealth. And he hasn't deposited it all in one. The word says we all see in part, and obviously we all have a part. Amen? Amen. But look at this. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may what, know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. It begins with an enlightenment, just like when we got saved, that a veil was taken away from our eyes and that truth was made known to us that he is Lord and King of Kings. And he is the only one to the way of the, the only way to the Father. Amen? Amen. 
So there was a time, if you will, that the eyes of our understanding were made open. And all I'm saying to you is, think about in that very place, because of how that happened in your life, and what your testimony is, did it not bring redemptive power? It saved you. Did it not? The understanding that was given in the veil that was taken away, in divine knowledge of who really is the king of all kings. Not just the knowing, oh, I know about Jesus, and you know, he, he did, no, 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 you don't understand. You don't understand, I know him. I know him in a personal way, in a relationship of love, because the veil has been taken away. I can see, and because I can see, I now have understanding. Yes. And that understanding has produced redemptive power. That's why you're sitting here. That's why I'm here. Okay, so, understanding. Let's go to, um, Beth, would you take us to Ephesians 3, 14 through 20? For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through the Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond, above and all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. I believe with all my heart, reading these passages, that Paul had divine wisdom, yes, but he also had divine understanding. In the verses that we read prior, he said, listen, this is what's happened to you. The eyes of your understanding were enlightened. Take a step back and realize that in that very place, redemptive power came upon you. But now he's saying something else so that you and I have a, a foothold or a place that we can stand on the rock of our salvation. He says that you might comprehend with all the saints what is the height, the length, the breadth, the width of the love of God? But even before he says that, in faith, in faith. Why? Because everything that happened, that faith operates through love. That you have a comprehension now. It's not just that I have an understanding. I get it. I got it. I have laid hold of what God has come to me so that he can lay hold of me. As a verb, as a verb, excuse me, the word comprehend means this. It literally means to embrace. Not just to embrace, not just to get the picture, but that literally all of that will come upon us in a way where it transforms our lives. So now my understanding and the redemptive power that follows that from on high has caused me to comprehend. I move from just understanding to now embracing the very thing that's been revealed to me. Are you good with this? Yes. I'm being very honest with you. Back. I have said to you 
It's not about me, Pete. But I don't want to say something that cannot be supported by the word. Amen? I don't want to just give you something because it sounds like a good idea or some other foolishness. But I really believe the goodness of God that has so come upon us today is to say this. Is to say, I want to give you understanding. I heard what you're saying. I'm not playing my words. I'm just going by what the Spirit of God is doing in this house today. That even when you don't understand, we were ready to say, you're still choosing me. And I see, even when you're between a rock and a hard place, it doesn't matter. You choose me. I want to give you this understanding. Because it will open the door, if you will, to redemptive power. Enabling you to do what only you can do through me. So what happens? Understanding comes. Heavenly understanding. Comprehension follows. But I want to tell you something. What is Paul talking about after the eyes of the understanding? What is he talking about comprehending the, the love of God, the height, the breadth, the width, the length? What is he talking about right after that? He's saying to you, understand this. I've told you all this so that you can apprehend something. The greatness of his power that lives inside of you. Come on. That there's something that I want you to apprehend because I want you to walk in power. That I'm a supernatural God. I am not bound by time or space. I am not bound by your circumstances, even your failures, your ups and downs. I'm not bound in any way, in any shape, in any form. But I don't want you bound in any way, in any shape, in any shape. I want you to lay hold of that which is not as though it is. I want you to apprehend my word and pick up the weapons of your warfare that are not common but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. I want you to apprehend that even now sickness has no place on you as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Tell the devil he's trespassing. Get up and get angry. Do something even now that you've never done before. Because if you want to go someplace that you've never been, you have to do things you've never done. Understand that I want you to apprehend. I want you to apprehend your children in your prayer life. And don't give up because they're giving you a hard time. Don't give up because they have a bad testimony. Because I'm going to turn the testimony into a message. I'm going to turn the one that is far away, so close to me, that you're not going to be able to see the line between me and her. You're not going to be able to see that line. You're not going to be able to see that line. That's how close I'm going to be to him. I want you to apprehend as a church. I have said to you, and I'm, I'm continuing to open your understanding. Doesn't matter who came and who went. Doesn't matter what happened yesterday or the day before. I told you to occupy. Occupy, occupy, occupy. I want you to apprehend that. It's not just a church. It's not just a place where we gather. I sent you into a community. This is my territory, said the Lord. I want you to get angry. The Lord says be angry, but don't sin. Don't sin, but you can get angry. And get angry where your anger needs to be directed. Because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against the things that we see. What we are warring against is even now just the, the darkness and the rulers of this dark age, principalities and powers, and they need to be displaced. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to cast out this. No, they need to be pushed out. Yes. Pushed out, pushed out. Why? Because God has now occupied the territory that they once occupied. I want you to apprehend that. Stop thinking about what happened yesterday and the day before. Mo Larry and Curly showed up. No, whatever the case may be, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. The Lord is saying to you, listen, I want you to so apprehend that I have put the eternal weight of glory in your heart, and the enemy has tried to blow it out, snuff it out, crush through it. <laughs> but you know what? Let the testimony that's way down deep inside to the soles of your feet come up and say, listen, I have apprehended. I'm tired of the nonsense. And you know what? I'm going to make a declaration. Greater is he. Greater is he. Greater is he. Greater is he. In me. Not in the whole world. Yes, the whole world. But greater is he in me than he was in the world. 
want you to apprehend one of the best testimonies I ever heard. And I'm not judging anybody, believe me. I got a lot of room for improvement. I was going to say employment. <laughs> Why are you laughing, man? I got a full time job. I didn't even know what I was saying. Thank you, thank you. Lord bless you in your memory. <laughs> there was a conversation between a man who knew the Lord and another man who knew the Lord. And the first man, his son was astray. He was, he was out there. So this other brother, in his stupidity, decided to make mention of it, but it wasn't good. Oh, I hear your son, and I was out there, he's doing, he's doing this, he's doing that. Like the man didn't know. <laughs> the brother was the son. But you see, he apprehended something. He turned around and said to the guy, it's all right. Not passive, not apathetic, not indifferent. He said, all he's doing is working on his testimony. <laughs> <laughs> and he got his mouth dropped open. Wow. Wow. I don't know why you're all laughing. Because you're just like that kid. So am I. Uh, you don't know that Jim Luisi, man. He, he's in the lost column. <laughs> he is as stubborn as a mule, prideful. I don't think he has all his marbles. <laughs> and probably a lot more. That's his resume. But you see, it took an unveiling. Yeah, yeah. It took a comprehension. So that God could apprehend me. That's right. Amen. It's not just about apprehending. It's about allowing God to apprehend us. Yeah. It'll make all the difference in your life and mine. I'm really wrestling with this one because I'll probably get into a lot of trouble. You want to see me get into trouble? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, John, yes. Are you with me? Okay. The name of the ship is the Titanic. <laughs> so I'm going to say this with as much sincerity, love, and respect for the person that involves, that is that involves. I said, Lord, kiss us with the kisses of your mouth. But before I said that, I said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So this has got to be worked up. 25,000 points one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord knows how to get to me. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be saved. And for the multitude of people in the place, I'm not dismissing that. So when the Lord knew how to get to me, he says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on. He says, the one is good. I said, you know, it, it's good, like when Susan kisses you, it's good. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. so then the Lord says, all right, now what do you think? I said, Lord, kiss us with the kisses of your mouth. Mm -hmm. To awaken love. Because even as yeah. we love each other and we would kiss one another, we would kiss it in a loving way. What he asked me back. It was a flood that comes upon you. So may the Spirit of God come upon us and flood us with the knowledge of Him in such a way that truly He speaks to us and grants us and gives us and imparts to us understanding, comprehension, and that the redemptive power of these things would come upon our lives for His glory for the salvation of many, many, who knows how many, and more than that in Jesus' name. Amen. You're going to sue me?
to Revelation 20 years, and that can have one more life. But everybody has a different one, because we can't kiss two people at the same time. He kisses you, and that's the intimacy. And that's where we are right now. In that intimacy and in finding his love in that revelation, you know who he is. Amen. God bless you all. My son lives down south now, so I bless you all. Yeah. <laughs> and may the love of God really rain down on you. But just because he can, truly can. And this is part of the apprehension of the not apprehension, but that we should be apprehending. That he can truly do exceedingly abundantly. Beyond what we ask, think, or imagine. Because I'm convinced none of us would be in that in this room if that were not true of him. Amen? Amen. God bless you.